Hi everyone, my name is Wendy and I am coming to you from the Dallas headquarters in, or from the TI headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Um, I am joined with my colleague Eric. Hey, how you doing? And my colleague Curtis. Hey there. And we are part of the STEM squad. So we want to welcome you. We're going to do some activities for you today that you can do at home with some simple household um, items as well as some few items that you can pick up from the local stores in your area. But the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to practice our safety rules and we're going to put on our our lab coats and our safety goggles okay all right and while we're doing this guys um we do have uh, the option of you being able to ask questions as we are doing these demonstrations and activities um, so feel free to send any of those questions in and we will get those answered for you um, we have a range of activities that we're going to be doing for you today. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of them will just be household items. Some of them will also include TI technology as well. So um, we will get started, and we've got several to go through. So the first one we're going to do, um, my colleague Eric is going to do for you. Okay. Hey, yeah, thanks, Wendy. This one's a lot of fun, guys. This one involves, uh, all you need are a um, couple of aluminum cans, uh, soda cans, or the energy drink cans work great. Uh, and you can see we have those here, and I've got a hot plate, and I have an ice bath, just uh, in a pan with some ice water. Um, and what we're going to do is I've been heating these cans up, and what's happening is, is the water inside the can, which you only need about uh, maybe about a half inch or so in the bottom of the can, uh, that's getting heated up. Uh, everything, all the air inside the can is heated up. And what I'm going to do is take these tongs, I'm going to grab the can very carefully, very safely, I'm going to invert the can into the water. So what this does is it closes off the mouth of the can so no air can get in or out. And let's see what happens when I do this. So I've got the can right here. Uh, it's all heated up, and here we go. And nothing happened, all right, because that's, I don't know what happened. All right, so let's try it with this one here. That's science, though. Yeah, that's science, and everything works. a couple experiments. Ah, there we go. There we go. That one worked just beautifully. That's why you always have two. <laughs> and so what's going on here is that the water inside the can heated everything up, all the air inside the can. When I inverted it, no new air could get into the can, and the air that was trapped inside the can cooled off rapidly. That um, air, when, when air cools off rapidly, it, it, uh, it uh, condenses. Therefore, the air pressure outside the can versus inside the can was much larger. So that air pressure outside the can crushes the can uh, immediately. And you saw that uh, there with, with uh, this can here. Um, so so uh, that's the crushing can uh, demo. It's a lot of fun. You can also do this with gallon size cans that you can find in the paint department at any local hardware store at a bigger scale. So the, the, uh, the, that's a lot of fun. But be safe, be careful, make sure an adult's helping you with this um, if, if you're a child tuning in. All right. Okay, no questions yet from the audience, but um, I have one, though. Um, do you think that maybe, or is it the size of that can maybe being taller than the other? Does that matter or not matter? I know you mentioned we could use larger cans, but would that yeah. make a difference or not? No, great question. Um, uh, it, it certainly shouldn't make a difference. This can should have uh, become crushed. I think what happened was I was on a cool spot of the, um, a relatively cool spot of the, uh, the boiler plate here, and so um, it didn't heat the air up fast enough. And, I, and I, may not have, uh, I may not have turned it quickly enough either. So that, that kind of happens. But so how fast do you turn question. it, actually? Yeah, you got to gonna... be quick. you got to be quick. Um, and these tongs are great, too. So these rubber-coated tongs, just to make sure things are safe. And you get a good grip on the can. It's a good idea, idea to have those as well. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Still no questions yet, so let's get, uh, keep moving. What's our next one going to be, Eric? All right. This one's, uh, this one's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of you may have seen this one before, but it's, it's still a lot of fun to try it. So what I have is a hard-boiled egg, and uh, this is a large hard-boiled egg. This works better with small and medium, but the local grocery stores around here, they only sell large and extra large. Everything's so bigger everything's in Texas. Bigger in Texas. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> and so I've got a, a glass dairy bottle here. You can use just about any uh, glass bottle that has an opening just slightly narrow, more narrow than the diameter of the egg itself, so you can see that this egg will sit on top of the bottle. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is I need to grab a little bit of paper. Curtis, can you grab me some paper over there? Just a little oh, square yeah, of go. paper. That'll work. That'll Maybe work. a little bit larger than what you need. Okay, all right. Um, matches or a lighter um, are great for this. Uh, but again, if you know, for students, make sure adults are present and, and you guys are being safe. Um, you loosely wad up the paper. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to light the paper, stuff it in the bottle, and then I'm going to put the egg on top, and we'll see what happens. All right, so let's go. Let's try this out here. All right. So I got my paper in there, and you see the egg oh, gets sucked wow. right into the bottle. Okay, so the question is, is why? Why did that happen? Um, and the reason is, is because when I put that paper inside the bottle, the paper was on fire, uh, and it heated up the air inside the bottle. The egg was on top, trapping the air that was inside the bottle. Uh, and the only air escaping was, and you may have seen it, the egg might have vibrated just a little bit, the hot air leaving the bottle, because it's more pressure inside than outside at that moment. But as soon as that fire goes out, guess what? Uh, all the oxygen's consumed, the air pressure inside decreases relative to the air pressure outside. So you kind of get this sucking effect from the bottom of the bottle, and the air pressure on top of the egg pushes it into the bottle in a similar kind of way that the can worked, where the air pressure crushed the can because there's a difference in air pressure. Okay. Any questions on this one? Um, actually, we have a question from Kimberly. What age group is this activity good for? Oh, yeah. Great question. So um, either of these demos are great for uh, kids, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school as a demo to talk about air pressure differences. But I would recommend a teacher or a, an adult uh, actually conduct the demo just because you're working with a hot plate and you're working with a, you know, a lighter or matches. So it's, it's best if, from a safety point of view, if an adult or a uh, teacher runs this demo. Absolutely, we okay. need to stay safe doing these activities. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Eric. And I believe the next one we're gonna do is gonna be with Curtis. Sure thing. Well, we're gonna continue on in the pressure piece. I think I learned a couple of things from Eric on the last two. Okay. So actually this demonstration is, uh, is really uh, exercising some of the similar kinds of things here. So this is a breaking board paradox. Things that you need uh, for this for this paradox or for this experiment uh, are just a large sheet of paper uh, a piece of newspaper would work really well. I've got a sheet of butcher paper that I've torn off here. And then uh, a paint stick that you can get uh, from your local hardware store or something like that. Uh, I've actually got a little bit larger one than, than standard size. I think this one's a five gallon uh, one. So Eric, um, I want you to do, uh, do me a favor here for a second. Eric, could you just go ahead and whack that, uh, that, paper, that paint stick? See if you can break it on the edge of the... Uh, so, so just right one here. hand, try to hit it hard enough to break it. So try to hit, break it from yep. this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just kind of like we would have expected, uh, the board just break. kind of flies across the room there, doesn't break, there's no pressure on top of it heavy enough to, to actually uh, break that, that piece here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this sheet of paper over the top of this bigger, thicker board uh, than the one Eric had. And I think if I hit it hard enough, based on the things you've shown me uh, about pressure, I should be able to, to break this. What do you think? I don't know. Do I don't think so. A drum, a drum roll. There we go. I feel like the breaking board guy. All right. Here we go. And it didn't break. My paper ripped. <laughs> Okay, yeah. we're going to try that one more time here. Yeah, you got to love science That's okay, demos. we'll regroup. We'll <laughs> we're going to regroup. All right, I'm going to try, the, yeah, try that side. I taped it a minute ago, that's so we'll see. We'll see if that's So uh, hold on, tell me what's enough. going on here again. All right, so before I try this, now you guys saw that paper bent in the middle, uh, so it didn't quite get enough pressure to break that, that board. So here's, what, here's the deal, Eric. Okay. Uh, Air pressure puts down uh, on a flat surface here about 14 pounds per square inch. All right, forgive the uh, the math guy for hanging out with you science guys and using pounds per square inch, uh, but that's how I talk. All right, so 14 pounds per square inch, but there's a lot of surface area over the top of this. So I've got this huge column of air sitting down on top of this piece of paper. Now, in theory, if I hit that thing hard enough uh, and the paper doesn't bend. Uh, that was my problem, the paper bent a minute ago. Uh, there should be enough weight to hold that thing down, enough mass to hold that thing down long enough for that board to break. So you're so going to try, try it again? I'm going to try it again. Are you nervous? I'm a little bit nervous. That <laughs> okay. it didn't, it's broken every other time I've tried this, so I'm a little nervous. All right, here we go. One more try, and then we'll move on. It didn't break again, Eric. <laughs> That's okay. Let me I think you got a really strong paint stick right I, there. I, I do. do have a question from Allison. All right, fire uh, away. Uh, 
what what type of questions would you ask your students when doing something like so, this? So a couple of things from a math teacher perspective I definitely want to talk to them about is just actually how much mass is sitting on top of that paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got surface area. I've got kind of a, a unit conversion uh, question I could ask and I could talk about just how much mass is or how much pressure is uh, being put on that paper, uh, which is what actually holds that paint stick down. Okay. Do you have to have any karate skills to do this? Well, I don't have any, and mine didn't work, so maybe karate skills would help. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've I'll seen, see if I can set it up, and we may come back in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, we can try yeah, again. I've seen Curtis do this demo before, yes. and he's got mad karate skills, so look yeah. out. <laughs> but this, this, is good. this just goes to show you what you do in a, a science um, setting, to where when you're doing lab experiments, when certain things don't happen the way you expect them to, that's why you do a hypothesis, which right. most of you are familiar with. Um, if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to, then you adjust some of your variables. You adjust, say, for instance, we have some paper that maybe doesn't have um, a particular rip or tear in it um, that may be causing that, and then you try it again, and it may or may not work. And if it doesn't, then you adjust from there. So we just keep yep. going. All right. Okay, so All we're right. going to go to the next one. It looks like this one, Eric, has some TI technology in it. Yeah, Wendy, this one's using uh, a, a unit from a program called Path to STEM Projects. So this program was meant for... Um, uh, students and teachers that have really never done STEM before, they're not necessarily comfortable doing it, and this is a great way for them to get involved. And uh, this is free on our website, the website's education.ti.com slash path to STEM, uh, T-O, not the number two, path to STEM. And so uh, what, this, what this particular project is looking at is, is having students build a speaker and we build the speaker using just some common items that you might find around the house or even you know, in your science lab. So I just have a styrofoam cup. Uh, I've got a little neodymium magnet right there. You can see it on the table. And you can get these magnets from a hardware store or, uh, or um, uh, I have to say internet uh, retailers. And so those are available there. They're inexpensive as well. I also have an iron nail, a uh, two to three inch nail would work. Um, I have a soda straw and some copper wire. So this is uh, called magnet wire. It's just insulated copper wire. You can get this from, again, the hardware store. You can get it from an online retailer. Uh, and it's hooked into a breadboard, which is part of the TI breadboard pack. It's a, an accessory you can get for the TI Innovator Hub, which is uh, TI's um, microcontroller unit meant for middle school and high school students. And then that connects into your graphing calculator. So graphing calculators that work with this would be your TI Inspire CX or your TI84 plus CE graphing calculator. Either will work. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, I've got my soda straw. I put my nail inside the soda straw. And what I'm going to do is I wrote a program that um, it basically uh, modulates the electrical signal through the, the wire. And there's not enough current or voltage to hurt, so you can hold this. It's not going to penetrate your skin. It's safe, completely safe. And what this does is, is it's, it's going to cause the nail to vibrate rapidly. Now, you won't be able to see this um, through the camera or even with the naked eye, but you'll have evidence that it's happening here in just a second. I'm going to take the magnet. I put it inside the styrofoam cup, and I just put that, attach that to the nail. So the magnet and the nail are connected because iron's magnetic. All right, and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little song. You guys tell me if you know the, uh, know the words. Okay, here we go. Holding that up to my microphone. Hey, Happy there you go. Too. You know, what is that song? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's right. So everybody has a birthday today. That's for you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and Curtis, you too, even though it's not your birthday. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. All right. I appreciate so, that. Yeah, no problem. All right. So, I have a quick question for uh, you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you said you're, you're programming or coding uh, the song into the calculator. Do I need to have any coding experience to yeah. this? No, that's a great question. Um, so I'm a biology person, no coding experience whatsoever, and uh, I can tell you once I went through the 10 minutes of code, uh, it's actually pretty simple. The stuff actually starts to make sense. Uh, coding has always been intimidating for me. Um, and, and so once I, once I went through 10 minutes of code, it, it became um, logical. It made sense. And what's great about the programming language that is available on all TI graphing calculators, it's, it's called TI Basic. Been around for a long time. It's simple, but it covers most things you want to do. And so 
It's got things called for loops and if then else statements and just the general logic of all coding languages are found in your graphing calculator and it's a great way to introduce students to coding. That's what's beautiful about TI, TI Basic. Okay, and I also have a question from Allison online. Um, mm -hmm. Allison would like to know um, what particular content area is being taught with this experiment? Oh, great question. Yeah, great question. So uh, in addition to just learning coding and making cool things like a speaker, um, the content areas you'd be looking at here would be physical science and physics because we're looking at um, uh, 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 electromagnetic um, uh, pulsation. You're, you're uh, changing the polarity of the electromagnetic um, uh, signal. But then also, just like these previous experiments, we're looking at air. And so, in fact, biology uh, in, in a way, because what's happening is the diaphragm of this cup is just like a speaker. It's vibrating rapidly. And that vibration of the diaphragm or the bottom of this cup causes the air inside the cup to vibrate at the same frequency. And guess what? The air around the cup also vibrates and gets to your ear. Inside your ear is your tympanic membrane or otherwise known as your eardrum. And that vibration of the eardrum sends a signal to your brain that says, hey, somebody's playing happy birthday. Um, where's the cake? And so, uh, so anyway, this is, uh, this, is, this, is the, uh, this is just a lot of fun because it covers a lot of um, science disciplines uh, all in one project. So great question. Thanks for asking. So that. could this also be kind of combined with maybe the arts as well, since you're talking about frequencies, which it has to deal with notes and music? And yeah, the A, the A in STEAM, right? Okay. So uh, when you take the, the A and you put it in STEM, you get STEAM. Okay. Um, so absolutely great point as well. So you can... And you don't have to play Happy Birthday. A lot of times kids will make their own songs. They'll learn how to do that basic level coding, and then they'll, they'll make all kinds of songs. Songs we're not allowed to talk about right now on Facebook <laughs> Live because they're copyrighted. Okay. <laughs> all right. I don't see any other questions on here, so we're going to move to the next one then. All right. And I think I'll talk about this one. Eric's okay. going to maybe try to perform the, okay, uh, the demonstration here. So we're going to stick with air and pressure. We're going to continue. Uh, we're going to continue moving along in that in that way. So I've uh, I've got a couple of cups here. We've put some cups together. We taped the bottoms of them together. We're just creating a little bit of a cylinder here. Uh, and what Eric is doing is he's actually got this uh, rubber band that he's wrapped around these cups here. Uh, and just like some of us in middle school when we shot rubber bands, and Eric's shooting things at me as, as we speak. Uh, Eric's going to wrap that around and actually just launch that cup. Uh, and what's kind of cool is uh, you guys may be familiar with this and you may not even know that you're familiar with it and that is uh, like a curve ball curves uh, or even uh, bending a soccer ball on a corner kick those same kinds of concepts are at play here uh, what we've got is these cups are going to actually spin uh, with a backspin uh, so opposite the forward motion that Eric's going to get as he shoots this uh, away from us here. Uh, <coughs> away from us, oh, right? right? Yeah, got away it. from us. Yes. I just want to be clear about that. All right, so uh, he's going to shoot this away from us here, and we'll see what happens. All right, hopefully. Let's see what happens here. Well, I'm glad. All right, so. Uh, what happened, you Curtis? Try? All right, so <laughs> what happened was the rubber band stuck to uh, the cup here. You want to try that again? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll, I'll keep talking while you do that. I think you're All right, so me I'll try to explain. Uh, maybe. Sorry about I'll try to uh, explain this a little bit better. So, what we've got happening here, the. Uh, Forward motion is actually creating drag uh, on the on the cup, so there's air uh, air drag, air resistance uh, on this, and so um, on the top of the cup because there's backspin, the top of the cup is actually uh, got less resistance than on the bottom of the cup. Okay, so air is actually going to end up moving faster uh, across the top of the cup than on the bottom of the cup. And because we have that difference in velocity, we end up with a difference in pressure. So there's actually a little bit lower pressure on the top side of the cups than on the bottom side of the cups. And that's actually what causes this thing then to lift up. It's called the Magnus effect, right? I want to try again. Try one more time. All right, ready? Come on, Magnus. Hey, hey, all right, perfect. We got that to work this time. Perfect, nice job. All right, so are there any questions about the way that that works? It's kind of a cool thing. Um, not right at the moment all for right. that particular one. Uh, we did have a question from Kara, though, asking about some additional activities maybe with the TI Innovator Hub. Oh, yeah. Calculator? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, in addition to the Build a Speaker, we have other activities online. There are six projects that are available on the Path to STEM projects. Uh, that, that you can do, and, and they cover things like digital output and digital input, and analog input and analog output and calibration, all kinds of stuff 
that is fundamental to um, uh, electrical engineering if your kids are interested in that kind of career path. Uh, they're good for coding as well. Um, there's one where you make a switch, an on-off switch out of a banana. All right, so how cool is that? Um, you want to use uh, not too ripe of a banana because it gets squishy. Uh, and then there's a, another one where you have a heater that you can use to keep like a lizard warm in a terrarium or something. So I didn't make the titles, folks. I'm just sharing information here. But um, so, so check that out, Pat the STEM. There's also some other activities that are available uh, uh, in addition to 10 minutes of code where you can just, uh, it's a little more plug and play, but you still have to code. So uh, you just plug in some sensors into the side of the innovator and some motors and some uh, uh, LEDs. And then you can, you can make your own sort of rock show if you wanted to uh, using the speaker. So all of that's online. Uh, it's education.ti.com slash STEM, I believe. Path is, to STEM, I think. Yeah, it was Path, path to STEM, STEM, and then there's a, a, a general landing page also that's the STEM landing page okay. that you can yeah. find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. That sounds like some good activities you could use in some STEM camps in the summer, too. So oh, uh, sure. you can find some information on our website about that as well. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Here, Wendy, I'll hold it. All right, there you go. Thank you, Curtis. Okay, so I'm going to lead the next one. Um, and this one, we are going to use a styrofoam cup. You kind of see a theme going here. We've got some styrofoam uh, different areas. Um, and then we're actually going to be using some pure acetone. This is something that I purchased just from the local uh, beauty supply store. And I have a, an aluminum little pipe pan that we're going to pour that acetone in. Um, and what we're going to do here is... Once we have the acetone in the pan, we're actually going to place the styrofoam cup in the pan in the acetone, and you're actually going to see something happen to the acetone. It's actually, or the styrofoam, it's actually going to go away. Now, what a lot of people will think is that it's actually uh, melting the styrofoam, which it is not because it is not a chemical reaction. We're not going to see, have any heat involved here. Um, it's just going to be a physical reaction. Now, what's happening with a uh, styrofoam container, whether it's a cup or the little packing peanuts or whatever it is, um, that is composed mostly of air. Um, what is actually the chemical property of it is the polystyrene, which that is just a polymer made up of a long chain of molecules. Um, so in the process of making these containers, these containers have a lot of air that are uh, filled into the process of it, and they're about 95% of air is what this is made up of, and the rest of it is the polystyrene. Um, the acetone is going to be a solvent, and uh, if you're not familiar with solvents just yet in your learning, um, just like if you were to dissolve sugar in water, the acetone is going to dissolve the polystyrene, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have Curtis pour some acetone into the container right. for me. Here. Now, acetone is um, is a uh, this is a pure form of acetone. But what most people are familiar with with acetone is fingernail polish remover. So uh, most everyone um, is familiar with that. You can pour some more; it'll be fine. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do, and I'm just going to use a little tongs so that I'm not putting my fingers um, in any of that. And it's really better to use this in kind of a well ventilated area, uh, just because of the fumes of the acetone. Uh, okay. So when I put that in here. You'll see a lot of bubbling action happening, and it looks like the cup is actually melting, but it's not. Okay, something else we could do is we could add some food coloring to this, oh, you and you could actually see coloring. it a little okay. bit more. Sure, I'll put a little Okay, and the on. more acetone that you're going to put in the container, the faster it's going to dissolve. But like I said, it is not a chemical reaction, so there's no melting, there's no heat involved. Um, all we're doing is simply just dissolving this. So all those air bubbles are getting released that were pumped into the process of it. So all of those are getting released. Okay, so we'll let this dissolve a little bit more. Now, once this is completely dissolved, what's going to happen, what's going to be left over is the actual polystyrene. Okay, so you'll notice there's a little bit of debris that's actually being left into the container here. Slow process. Okay, and once that is completely dissolved, what is left is the polystyrene. And what that's going to do, what you can do is you can actually remove this. And if you'll notice, I can just kind of pick it up. Um, but you can remove it from the acetone, from the liquid piece of it, and you can let it harden um, when it's not in the acetone. And you can put it into any shape that you want to. And uh, once you let it sit out for a little while, it will harden and it will stay in that shape that it's in. Okay. Well, Wendy, you got a question yes. here. A um, uh, question from Sarah, what's the difference between a chemical and a physical reaction? 
Okay, so a uh, chemical reaction, you're going to have something that is changing. So you're going to have some heat involved where you're completely changing the makeup of uh, the composition of what you started with. So a physical change is if you're changing from ice to water. Um, you're just change, it's, 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 you're still looking at, um, at water. Molecules are just in different forms. So a chemical change is you're going to completely change the composition of what you started with. Uh, another question is uh, from Laura, will fingernail polish remover work instead of pure acetone? Um, it's not really going to work as well, uh, just because of the makeup of it and because uh, the pure acetone is a little bit stronger uh, chemical wise. So you want to make sure that you do use the pure acetone, but you also follow some safety rules and not really have your hands um, in the acetone. It's not going to burn you or anything like that uh, because it is used in some different products and stuff. Um, but the just the regular fingernail polish is not quite strong enough to uh, dissolve this. It will eventually do it. It's just going to take a long time, not as quickly as it did right there. Great question. Uh, one more question. Where, okay. do, where do people find these activities? Okay, um, a lot of the activities we've done so far, uh, you can just find on the internet. You can just Google uh, different things as far as acetone and styrofoam. You can Google um, egg in a bottle. You can do, Google crushing can, uh, different things like that. Um, and as Eric mentioned, all of our activities that involve the TI technology, you will find on our website, education.ti.com. Um, and you can use the slash STEM or slash path to... Uh, path to STEM and find all of those activities. And Eric actually wrote a blog uh, on our TI uh, bulletin board uh, to describe all of these different things Perfect. that we're doing uh, on, this, on this show. So, um, so another place we can go and we can grab uh, that information. So, okay. Perfect. So Any other questions on that one? Looks like oh, uh, yeah, uh, a question from Kara. Is there anything else that acetone can dissolve? Um, well, they can dissolve different forms of styrofoam. Now, there are some, um, some thicker styrofoams that's not quite just, just polystyrene. There's other things that are formed in that, uh, but there's other things that it can dissolve. Obviously, it can dissolve fingernail polish um, and, and things like that. So there's, there's more things out there that it can, it can dissolve. All right, thank okay. you. Okay. Cool. Well, I think we got one more, Okay, right? we got one more. All right. Or since we're so competitive, we're going to go do that last one too. Uh, yeah, to we may need to set that one up one more time, right? We'll try. Oh, sorry, it one, more one more question, guys. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, question from Jeff. He wanted to know if rubbing alcohol will work as well. No, it's not going to work as well as the acetone does. The pure acetone is really what you want to use for this particular thing. Okay. okay thanks. All right. Well, Wendy, what have I got here? I've got some stuff. You told me to kind of stand back here and pour yeah. things together, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. This one is called Elephant's Toothpaste, uh, and we'll explain why in just a minute when we get to the, uh, the end of it. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of food coloring here. I have just some regular dish, uh, dishwashing detergent here. Um, I've got some hydrogen peroxide, and I purchased this from, or Curtis purchased this from a local beauty supply as well. Um, and we also have a little, bit have, of, a little uh, have a little package of yeast. Um, well, yeah, and in go. a in a science right. classroom setting, um, instead of yeast, we would actually be using potassium iodide. Um, and what the yeast or the potassium iodide is doing, it is acting as a catalyst, which means it's going to help this reaction happen a little bit faster um, than it normally would. So what we're going to do is uh, this particular activity um, with the hydrogen peroxide. The catalyst is going to help uh, the hydrogen peroxide decompose quickly, um, and it's going to decompose into the components of uh, water and oxygen. And by doing that, it's going to uh, release that oxygen, and when it releases that oxygen, we're going to have this in here with the uh, dishwashing detergent. Um, it's going to make that uh, solution up there just kind of go forward, go upwards, um, because it's releasing all of that oxygen. And by doing that, um, those oxygen uh, molecules get trapped in the, in the soap with the bubbles, and it creates the bubbles. Now, because we are in a contained area for uh, this particular Facebook Live, um, we're not using as large-scale um, equipment that you would use maybe a larger graduated cylinder um, to where you could really make this reaction um, go up a little bit higher than it's actually going to go here, but you're going to see the effect of it and see that you could use simple household items if you don't have things like graduated cylinders in your home. Okay? All right. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going uh, to mix these together. And you'll see why we, we call it the uh, elephant's toothpaste, because it's going to end up foaming up and it's going to um, come out of the, the top of the container here. All right. We ready to pour? Do I need to step back I, in? I don't know. I, based <laughs> on what we talked about earlier, I don't okay. think this is going to be a big, it. big uh, explosion reaction here, but let's, uh, let's, let's find out. Let's try it. Oh! Hey. Lots of bubbles. Of, so that's the oxygen that's there. getting trapped in there. Okay? 
So Ooh, that's kind of where they get the here. idea of the elephant's toothpaste, okay? Because if you had it in a graduated cylinder, which is probably what somebody did it in the first time, um, in my chemistry class, I used to do it with the potassium iodide in a graduated cylinder, and it comes up and it comes out like you are uh, squeezing a toothpaste container. So, uh, so that's the elephant's toothpaste. Great. Any questions on that, Eric? Uh, nothing so far. It looks like elephants. Okay, because we're competitive and we scientists like to just keep trying and trying things, we're going to go back and we're going to try, gonna try one of our experiments one more time. One more time. All right, we'll try right, that paper Curtis, third one more time. Time's charm. Third, third time's the charm. Eric, will you roll that out? I'm a little bit worried yeah. the way that's bent there. Uh, this could be. Did you stretch before? Yeah, I did not. <laughs> Should I stretch? I don't, I don't, might. Let's see. All right, so we'll get this uh, all stretched out. I, Boy, I'm a little bit nervous the way that's, uh, yeah. Okay, show them right. that that's solid solid, uh, <laughs> solid wood there. All right, so put that, all right, I'm gonna scoot this back just a little bit here. All right, fellas. Get that a little, little bit more. I'm really worried about this, by the way. Like this worried paper. about yes. the paper? Yeah, because look at the way it's that paper. It's kind of bowed up. I can't bowed. hold it here because that's cheating. I know, that's cheating. Because <laughs> then it's Eric and not air. Yeah. And it's okay if it doesn't. We realize we didn't have There is air it. in We had to go Eric. get some paper from elsewhere, and that's okay. A lot of hot air in air. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah. In the, Boy, I don't know about yeah, this. <laughs> Flip that over. See if it'll do it. No, that's no. not going to work. Okay, yeah. we'll try it one more time. One more time. I, I'm brave. All right, cameraman, be careful. Yeah, watch out. Here we go. Here we go. Got to go quick. Yay! Hey! All right. All right. Woo! Third time so, charm. Man, we tried that. Karate. Karate. I did, maybe so. All right, we did break it that time. Yes. I was a little bit nervous about so that. So remind paper. us again what, what happened. All right. So what was the just the, it was the same thing as what we did before. We really tried to effectively. We tried to accelerate that paper up really fast. And because yeah. there's this huge column of air sitting on top of it. Uh, that air weighs an awful lot. I didn't measure how large this is, but 14 pounds per square inch uh, uh, that's sitting on top of that. So that's a lot of weight on top of that. And because we tried to do it so fast, uh, there was an impulse, a lot of energy input into this, uh, and that uh, board couldn't handle it. And it broke instead of, uh, instead of lifting up the paper. So awesome. that's, uh, that's what we ended up with. Can you still use that to stir paint? I probably can still use this one to stir maybe a gallon bucket instead ah. of a five-gallon bucket like it was meant for before. Excellent. All right. Thanks for giving me another chance Absolutely. at that. Absolutely. That's way. what science is all about. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Nobody? Okay. All we right. appreciate you guys joining us today on behalf of the STEM Squad. I hope you guys have a great summer, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Happy summer.